Hey, what's going on guys? Today's video is gonna be slightly different as we're gonna be going over all of the difficult situations you may find yourself in whilst using the most of the effects packs. So whether you've just downloaded your first pack or this is your 20th, stick around as you may learn a thing or two, or 12. And this video is purely gonna be about the DaVinci Resolve presets of which we released over 1500 in the last year, which is crazy to think about. And the library's still growing, so stay tuned. But about a year ago, I was in a very similar situation to a lot of you watching this video where I just thought it was a drag and drop and everything's done. It, it kind of is for the most part, but there are a few do's and don'ts and a few workflows for you to get the best results. And one last thing I'll say before we do get started is that we do have a dedicated channel with individual videos that dive much deeper into the topics I'm about to go through. I'll try my best to make it simple enough and make sure you can get it with this video, but if I don't, that channel is always there. So the first thing that we'll get into and the first thing you'd use is the M installer. This is pretty much your own built-in motion VFX store that is its own app on your device. It means you can access your entire library of motion VFX plugins with just a click on both Mac OS as well as Windows. So if you haven't already, when making a purchase of a pack, it'll send you an email or pop up on your internet browser to download M Installer. Install that onto your machine and make sure you're logged in. Once completed, you'll see the entire library of packs you purchased. From there, you'll see a button on the pack that says Install, just click that and it will automatically go through your local folders and install itself so the next time you open DaVinci Resolve, the pack is there natively. Now the main other things you'll use the installer for is to reinstall the pack if there are any bugs, updates or improvements. Next is to get direct access to the video overview of that pack. So for each pack you download, it comes with an additional tutorial on how to use that pack, best practices and anything to bear in mind when using it. And depending on which product you've bought, you may see my face again. And lastly, this is where you can contact our support team whether that's directly through a pack if you're having specific details of that, or if it's a general motion VFX issue, you can go to the help button in the bottom left and that will open a live chat. So now diving into DaVinci Resolve, we'll be starting off with adjustment layers and compound clips. You would use these when applying effects that you don't want to interfere with your actual footage, or if you have multiple effects that you want to stack at the same time. So for example, a very popular one is camera movements. These are dynamic ways to add movements to your frames without you having to keyframe them. If I was to place this onto my clip directly, it doesn't quite work properly. It starts a portion of the way into the movement. And that's because the effect uses the entire clip to create the timing of this effect. So if I drag this clip all the way out from the left, you can now see the animation is starting from the beginning. But what if you don't want to use the entire length of a clip? Well, that's exactly when you'd use an adjustment layer instead. The main thing to note when using adjustment layers is to make sure they are only adjusting them from the end. This makes sure that the timing doesn't mess up and break the effect. So even if you need to make it short from the beginning, move the entire adjustment layer and then shorten it from the end. If you have already changed the adjustment layer from the beginning and you're trying to reset it back, you could delete the effect and reapply it or just head into the Fusion page and on this timeline, go to zero or just type it in the box to the right. Then when you come back to the edit page, you'll see your playhead is at the start of where the effect is being applied. So you can just get rid of everything before that. And this may seem like it's a lot, but unfortunately, these are the steps you have to take to prevent you from getting negative frames. And this is the same with every effect, including the built-in effects from DaVinci Resolve. And what a lot of people aren't aware of when using adjustment clips is that you can actually save them as presets. So an effect that I use quite a lot is the M2 before zoom, where it automatically punches in, holds for a bit, and then it zooms back out. Now I use this a lot with my talking heads, kind of like this. So instead of me having to manually set this up every single time as I use pretty much the same settings, what you can do is select your adjustment clip, open up your media pool, and literally drag your adjustment clip into the media pool. Then I'd rename this to zoom in. And now wherever I want to use this in the project, there it is. And I can still adjust it like normal. I can go into the inspector tab and adjust all the things there, but I now have that template saved. And then to go to one step further, you can actually save this preset into your power bins. And that's going to allow you to have access to that preset on every project you open on DaVinci Resolve. I told you you'd learn a thing or two. Next is the use of compound clips to fix the missing effects. So let's say I'm using a split screen effect like this. We can see again, this hasn't animated in. Even though we have it checked here in our inspector tab, the animation still isn't coming in. Again, because we're not using the beginning of the frame. So now that we've extended that to the beginning, you can see the split screen effect coming into play. But if we don't want to use this portion of her waving, let's say we're going straight to her talking on camera, I only want to use this amount. I still want that animation to come in. So to do that, that's when we create a compound clip. So I'll just delete this split screen for now. I'll right click, new compound clip. 
and this is now its own standalone clip. So I can't extend this. I can make it shorter, but even though I had more footage in the beginning, I no longer have access to that in this format. So now I'll drag that to the beginning and then put the split screen on. And now you can see that effect works perfectly. And if I put this on another clip, we can now see we have that split screen for both clips. And one final note to bear in mind when using these effects is regardless whether it's an adjustment clip or a compound node, the plugins still do require a minimum duration to work. When it's at the default length, you'll see that this split screen animates in, go to the end, and animates out. But if I was to make both these clips a lot shorter, you can see it animates in, but it doesn't quite animate out. And that's because the layer isn't long enough to allow time for that animation to work. So if you do want to have the animations when using these plugins, make sure each layer is long enough and there is enough time for the animation to work. There are of course exceptions to this, like when you're using MCAM rig. This is because you can control the timing of those in and out durations. So if you see a slider for the duration in the inspector tab, you can adjust it as you like. If not, you will need to keep in mind that minimum duration. And now we'll get onto the render cache. As you probably experienced, the more effects you use and the heavier the footage, the more taxing it is on your machine. So that's just something to bear in mind when you start stacking multiple effects, especially anything using grain, because that is your machine's worst nightmare. So because each frame will need to render separately when using these effects, be aware of what effects are turned on and make sure you turn the ones off that you don't need. So there's a few ways of how you can get around choppy footage and have smooth playback. And the first one is to simply turn on your render cache. This is where DaVinci Resolve will start to render your timeline as you edit to allow smooth playback. You'll see it working when you have it turned on as it's indicated with this red line turning to blue. Once it's blue, that means it's cached. Now, as well as this does work, it won't be the best method every time because anything you adjust, be it the length of a clip, the size, it's going to have to render the whole process again. Not to mention after doing this for an entire project, it will take up a large amount of storage on your machine. And where this would be most useful is if you were to create an intro sequence on a separate timeline, let the cache render on that sequence, and then you can drag that intro timeline onto your main editing timeline. Method two is to drop your playback quality. So if you're in a 4K timeline and you head on up to the playback menu, timeline playback resolution, half of that goes to 1080 and a quarter goes to 720. Now this is great when the effects that are causing your machine to slow are things from your color grades, or maybe you've used some backgrounds. Now, as you can see straight away, because we have the grain switched on, when you lower the quality of the grain, you can see it looks terrible. So it's fine if you just need it to play back to you know maybe listen to a talking head, but when you really want to see the image, this isn't the best option. So I would just switch the grain off at this point. Additionally, when you're using it with titles, you can see it looks pretty blurry. It's quite hard to see the detail of those titles. And again, you could get away with that if you're just trying to play it back near the end. But if you're making something quite exact, this could be quite distracting. So I'll just reset this back to our full quality. And I'll actually modify this a touch just so the blur is not so distracting. Cool, so now the last thing we can do, because as you can see, it's still a little bit choppy because we don't have any of those methods switched on. What you can do, and this is more for when you finish editing an entire section and you want the playback to be smooth because you know this is locked in. So if I adjust this here, and let's say one final thing I'd want to add is putting a name to this dance group. So now that's all complete, I'll highlight all the options, go right click and render in place. Now this is going to export this whole section of the timeline and use an exported version for playback. So these options here will determine what you can still edit whilst in the timeline. But the more boxes you tick, the better the playback will be. But just be cautious because once you do this, you will be limited as to what you can edit once this happens. So once I click render and choose a location for this video to be saved on my machine, you'll see this will now start to export. So playing this back, you can see it didn't work very well. And that's for a specific reason. So I'm just gonna undo that. Because I have these two title layers and they of course require transparent backgrounds are being used, when rendering in place, you need to make sure it's in a format that does allow an alpha channel so you can have that transparent background. So instead of the ProRes, you'd need to go onto FFV1, go to the bottom and this has the RGBA, so it does have the alpha channel. And now you have a perfectly playing portion of this timeline. However, another alternative to this would be to put everything inside a compound clip and then render in place. So regardless of the methods you use, there are pros and cons of each. I guess the only way to get around it is to win the lottery and get the most powerful machine on the market. But I think the grain feature would still somehow find a way to slow it down. So just remember, the heavier the load, the slower the cart. Large videos with a lot of effects will start to slow down your machine a lot more than the shorter videos with less effects. This is just the way it works. And on a slightly different note, one thing I'd really want you to take away from this video is the confidence to play around the titles in different ways. So for example, if I take this list title from the M2 before pack, I'll actually use two of them 
but I'll remove the middle section from this first layer as this is the line that I want to highlight. And then on the second layer, I'll remove everything but the middle section. Then I'll color it in yellow to make it stand out. And then lastly, put a rectangle around the whole list and there you have it. A composition made using multiple titles together to create something new. So don't be afraid to really push the boat out with the titles and see how creative you can be. Now taking a break from some of these more difficult workflows, we're going to head into drop zones and fusion clips. These are things that are usually found in the title section of your packs. And starting off with drop zones, this is where you can load your own photos or logos within the plugins. So it's super easy where all you need to do is inside the inspector, go to the relevant tab, hit the browse button, search through your folders, and there you have it. And the only thing to remember for when you're inputting these images into the loader is to make sure that the file names don't have a number sequence at the end of them. This will cause the plugin to read it as a sequence and the order may not be correct. And to expand on that, using this avatar from MShort, you can see here that it requires a photo to be placed in the middle of the drop zone. So first I'll just make this a bit bigger. Okay, so I'll go into the media tab, hit browse, and here I have my photos. So I have a few photos here that are labeled in a sequence from one to five. And I also have a photo here that it just has A. So you can see when I click on the photo that doesn't have a sequence with it, the photo loads perfectly. But now if I was to choose another photo with the sequence, we get this error message that informs us that we're going from one frame to five because it's now no longer loading just the one photo, but because there's a sequence, it's loading all of them. So as you can see, as I scrub through, all of these photos are constantly cycling around. And that isn't the intended effect. I mean, it's nice to know it's a possibility, but that's not what we're going for. So just keep that in mind when you're selecting your photos, don't have them all in a numerical ordering system like I showed. And next we have fusion clips. Now these are usually in the effects tab within the placeholders. And these can be a little bit more tricky as you need multiple sources of video for the effect to work. So I've dragged this horizontal composition placeholder from the M Beauty pack and we can see we have the split screen. Now this is duplicating effect and it's crashing out a little bit because this placeholder isn't meant for one clip. As you can see in the inspector tab, it says built for fusion clip with two sources. So to make this work properly, we're gonna to have to delete this fusion clip. I'll add that second source to the timeline, highlight them both, right click and new fusion clip. Now it looks like I do just have that bottom layer, but don't be alarmed. We do have both clips inside. And to double check that, you can just go to the fusion tab and you'll see two sources. So going back to the edit tab, I'll drag this placeholder on again. And now you'll see we have the split screen of the two clips. And we can still modify the media here, so we can drag it up or down. And of course, it is scaled properly, so if you go left or right, you will see the background. However, if you'd want to zoom in, you do still have the option, so you can really manipulate this to get the effect you want. Now, if you do want to change the order, you can also do that as well, just by right-clicking again, go to Open in Timeline, and now you can just switch the order of the layers, and it will automatically adjust on the main timeline. Now, I know at this point, I've taught you a few things already that you didn't know existed. So if I have, please make sure you do drop a like on this video. So something I used earlier that you may have caught onto is how to modify an effect with the fusion overlays. So if I get that same blur effect on the M duty pack, click on this, and I go on this menu here, fusion overlays, you can see this green line in your frame. So instead of me using the boxes in the inspector tab to try and drag exactly where I want the blur to be, you can just drag these boxes around and modify the effect like that. For me, this is a much easier method to get the results that I do want as it's easier to control by literally dragging exactly where I want the points to be. And this also works with things like camera movements when you want to control the boxes of where your zooms will go into. So all of the motion VFX plugins are made for a default 16 by nine aspect ratio, but there are times where we need things for maybe a nine by 16, four by five or one by one. So different aspect ratios will be needed. So let's say I have an effect like this, we can see by default, the text is coming out of the frame, and that's obviously not what we want. So the two options you have is scaling down the text in the content controls, or you can go to the aspect mode and go to the letterbox and envelope. Now that'll probably scale the text, making sure it does fit. Then from here, you can make the further adjustments inside your content controls and in the text box controls. Now this isn't a common issue as most of the titles will automatically adjust, but for the ones that don't, this is the method to get around that. And now we'll move on to the transitions. Now these are the easiest parts of every motion VFX pack, because they are literally a drag and drop. And really the only thing that can go wrong is when you try to drag a transition on and there aren't enough frames for the clip. As you can see, this transition isn't going in between the two clips like it's supposed to, it's only going on the one. That's because there isn't enough frames for the transition to work. And an easy way to know that is when you click in between the two clips, you're seeing a green line and a red. That red means there's no more frames. So if I was to select the trim edit mode or just press T, I can drag this across, so now I'm moving the clip sideways. And now when I click in between those two clips, we can see it's highlighted as green. Now I'll drag that transition on. 
and it works perfectly. Now moving on to the color page and going over the LUTs. If the pack you bought has them included, to find them, go to the LUT section here at the top, go to Motion VFX, and there you have all the LUTs available. These LUTs, however, are made to be used on Rec. 709 footage. So if you shot it in log like this, you want to first convert it into Rec. 709, make your white balance and exposure adjustments, and then apply the LUT. And now the very last topic that we'll cover is troubleshooting. And this is when you're trying to create a masterpiece, but one of the plugins isn't working the way it should be. So there's a three-step approach when it comes to fixing the issue. Hopefully it's something I've covered on this video or it's already on the Motion VFX support channel. But if not, this is what we'll do. Number one is to reinstall the pack. Just like I showed you before inside the M installer, you want to hit that drop down menu and click repair. We may have already done an update that could have fixed this problem as, you know, we're pretty quick at these things. But once you've hit repair, it won't actually change anything you've already put on a timeline. You'd have to drag on a new effect or title onto the timeline. That's just the way Resolve works. Changing things around inside your effects library won't break or make an impact to the timeline as they're completely separate. And if that still doesn't work, try opening a new project. Sometimes it's a caching issue with some of the footage and effects that you put together. It just doesn't quite like it. So if you start a new project, that should do the trick. And then finally, if somehow you still can't get it to work after all of these steps, head back into M Installer and contact our support team. Send them a screen recording of the bug and they'll make sure to find a solution so you're back creating again. So that's it. By this point, I hope, you understand some of the most difficult workflows inside the Motion VFX packs and you find them easy. But if you do have any questions at all, please drop them down below or head to our website at motionvfx.com. I've been JC and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.